Hi, I'm Danny and these are my diecast disasters. In this video I'll be doing a post-apocalyptic muscle car build off with Rob from Matchbox Garage and Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop. If you follow my channel you'll know I've done quite a few build offs with Rob already but this will be my first one with Keith. So if you haven't checked out his channel, Outlaw Speed Shop, I highly recommend you do. He does heaps of really cool customs. Everything from muscle cars and hot rods to some cool post-apocalyptic Gaslands cars. I'll leave links to both their channels and their build-off videos in the description below. So for my muscle car build-off, I've chosen a really classic American muscle car, the Chevrolet Chevelle SS396. And this is a 1967 model from Hot Wheels. The first step is to drill out the rivets and take the car apart. Next I use some poly stripper to remove the paint from the casting. Here it is with the paint removed. I use a wire brush on my rotary tool to clean it up a little and remove any oxidation. It's pretty clean as it is. Here it is cleaned up and ready for some fabrication. After quite a few days thinking about this, I've decided not to go too overboard on the fabrication as I feel it'll take away too much from the look of the car and it maybe won't look like a muscle car anymore. I start with some side armour and a couple of bars on the boot. I also added some mesh on the side windows. I add a pilot to the front of the base of the car. This is made with some thick styrene. I use a needle file to put some scratches and dents in it. I add a spike at the front of the pilot. I'll stick a couple of skulls on this later. I paint the body of the car with some Molotow silver rattle can. I'm going to use an airbrush to paint a rusty effect on the car. I start by thinning down some dry rust effect paint. The car is airbrushed with the rust paint. Next I mix some hull red into my rust paint and darken it a bit. I then airbrush on a very small amount of this lightly from a distance so it gives a speckly effect. Next I thin down some of the hull red paint. And again this is applied in a speckly layer over the body of the car. I finish by highlighting some of the panel lines and sills etc with some dark rust effect paint.
I don't want my armor panels on the side to be painted like the car, so before I paint it, I apply some liquid mask to them. I want a heavily chipped paint effect. I'm going to use some salt to achieve this. First of all, I paint on some water where I would like the paint to be chipped away. Next, I sprinkle on some ground up rock salt. I've ground it up so there's different sized particles. The salt will stick to the wet areas. The car body can now be served with an ice cold beer or alternatively painted with an airbrush. I looked at a lot of photos of the old Chevelles online and the most common colours seem to be red, blue, black or white. So I chose to paint mine red. Once the paint has dried, a brush is used to brush off the salt, taking away the paint with it and leaving a nice chipped effect. The edges of the masks on the armour are lifted up with a scalpel and then you can just pull them off. I want the rust on the armor panels to be a different shade than the body rust. So I apply a couple of shades of rust wash to them. I paint some of the details on the body in light steel. Some rust effects are added.
I add some shading with a dark wash. I finish the armor paneling with some metallic weathering powders. I cut some small lengths of base wood to make a rack for the rear of the car. Some washes are applied to colour them. I'm going to put this old crate and a drum on the rack at the back. First I remove the remainder of the sprues with my rotary tool. They are then painted. I first paint the crate brown and paint the drum with rust. Some washes are applied. I dry brush some light sand color to finish the crate. Some chipping solution was applied to the rusty drum and once this had dried I painted it in black and red. I then used some water and a stiff brush to chip the paint on the drum. After a coat of the Molotow silver rattle can, the base of the car is painted with dark wash and some rust washes. I then applied some weathering powders.
I sculpt some little skulls out of modeling compound. Some holes were drilled through the middle of them. They are painted in skeleton bone and then given a wash to bring out the highlights. So here are our painted parts ready to go back together. The skulls have been placed on the spike at the front. The interior has been painted to look really grubby. There's also a gun that I painted up to go on the side of the car, but I ultimately decided against it. After I had the body parts back together, I applied my first layers of dust weathering. When I was happy with this, I fixed it with a coat of flat clear. I'm going to use these Scuderia 75 wheels as they're not too flashy. I paint them with some rust effect paint and a dark wash. Once the wheels are installed on the car, I apply some more dust weathering. Before we take a look at our finished post-apocalyptic Chevelle, let's take a look back and be reminded of what we started with. A pretty cool looking maroon Hot Wheels Chevelle SS396 with some nice tampos on the side of it. Not a bad looking car. But what might it look like after the ravages of a nuclear apocalypse and being used to travel the wastelands by some Mad Max type character? And here it is, 
our finished post-apocalyptic muscle car. The nice red paint job has been chipped and worn away by the radioactive winds and dust, revealing the salt rusted metal underneath. Our Mad Max type character has added some armour to the sides of the car, better protection in the event of any duels, along with his pilot or cow catcher at the front, ready to plough anyone or anything out of the way. He has some spare fuel and supplies strapped on the back and some skulls on the spike at the front. So I hope you enjoy this post-apocalyptic muscle car build. I've tried not to go too over the top with this one and keep the cool original lines of the car. I felt if I started to add too much crazy stuff it just wouldn't really look like a muscle car anymore. While we take a look at some photos of the car, I'll just take a moment to welcome all my new subscribers and say a massive thanks to everyone for the awesome comments and likes on my videos. Thanks heaps everyone. And an extra special thanks to my Patreon supporters. I'll welcome my new Patreon supporters this week, Diecast Pirate and William Robinson. Thank you Pirate. Thank you William. I really appreciate the support. And thanks to my other patrons, Rob, Dan and Eric and Eileen. If you'd like to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon page. I'll leave a link in the description below. So now if you haven't seen Matchbox Garage and Outlaw Speed Shops builds, I suggest you click the links in the description below and head on over and check them out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video, please like, share and subscribe.